Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. I hope you've enjoyed your extra week off school. In today's story, we'll hear of a woman who was thirsty, but Jesus shows her that she was thirsting after the wrong things. First, Jonah's going to show us an activity he likes to do when he's thirsty, and maybe you can give it a go sometime as well. When I'm thirsty, my favourite drink is lemonade. I'm going to show you my homemade lemonade recipe. First, we're going to cut the lemons in half. Please ask an adult to do this for you. Now we're going to squeeze the lemons to collect the juice. Now pour the juice through a sieve into a measuring jug. That's left us with about 200 millilitres of lemon juice. Now we'll need the same amount of water and sugar. First I'll put my 200 millilitres of water in the saucepan. Now I'll put my 200 ml of sugar in the saucepan. We're going to heat it gently and stir it till it goes clear. Make sure an adult is with you while you're doing this. Now it's gone clear. Now we're going to pour the syrup in the lemon juice. Watch out, it's hot. Now we're going to pour the lemonade into a jug or bottle. Whenever you're serving, add water to dilute the taste. You might even want to use fizzy water. Today's story is about a woman who was very, very sad. This lady had had so many disappointments in her life. She had been married once, but it hadn't worked out. In fact, she'd been married two times, three times, four times, five times, and none of the times had worked out. She must have been really, really sad and really, really disappointed. And because of these five marriages that didn't work out, all the ladies in the town where she lived looked down on her. They didn't want to have anything to do with her. They just thought they were better than she was. So she was very lonely. She was sad and she was lonely and her life had not worked out the way she had planned. She was full of regrets. But one day, she met Jesus and her life was completely changed. On this day, Jesus and his disciples were walking between Judea and Galilee and they were tired and they were hungry when they reached this lady's town. And Jesus said to his disciples, lads, you go and get us something to eat. I'm going to sit here by this well. Now it wasn't that Jesus was lazy. Not at all, but what he wanted to do was to meet this lady. He had an appointment with her. 
She did not know that, but Jesus knew and he wanted to make sure that he had time and space just to talk to her. And Jesus makes appointments with us too. It might be hard to believe, but this is an appointment between you and Jesus. It's not just Tessa sitting here talking, but whenever we think about God's word, when we study God's word, it's an appointment with God himself. It's an appointment with Jesus. And when we go to church or whenever we sit down to do our quiet time, it's an appointment with Jesus. He wants to meet with us. And Jesus really wanted to meet this sad and lonely woman. And as he sat there in the blazing sun, who should come down the road but our sad and lonely lady? And she came at that time of the day because she knew that none of the other women of the town would be there. Because she did not want to have to put up with their cheeky comments or their cheeky glances at her. She just wanted peace and quiet. And she came towards the well in order to get her water in the middle of the day. So nobody was there to make fun of her. But there was Jesus. And Jesus turned to her and he said to her, may I have a drink, please? <gasps> the lady was utterly flabbergasted. She was completely amazed. She said to him, don't you know, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. In those days, Jews would never speak to Samaritans. In those days, Jews thought they were better than Samaritans. And in fact, in those days, men wouldn't really speak to women in public either. And this was a lady who nobody in the town cared to speak to. So she was utterly amazed. But Jesus wanted to meet her. Jesus wanted to speak to her. Jesus wanted to be her friend. And Jesus wants to meet you and he wants to speak to you. And he wants to be your friend too. Jesus turned to her and then said something very strange. He said, if you knew who was asking you for a drink, you would ask me. You would ask me for living water. The lady was very confused indeed. And she said to him, but you don't have a bucket. You don't have a bucket to get this living water. Who do you think you are? Are you better than our ancestors who dug this well? And Jesus really said, yes. He said, this water here from this well will quench your thirst for a little while. It will make you feel better for a little while. But the water that I have on offer is living water. It's living water that will give you life forever. Now it was no accident that Jesus was sat on the wall of the well at this point, pointing down at the water, because sometimes it really helps us to see what we're talking about. So I have brought some water with me. Jesus was trying to teach this lady three big things. He was saying that water is really good for washing. And we have all been washing our hands lots and lots, and we're probably getting very, very good at washing our hands. But we need water to make ourselves clean. And Jesus wanted this lady to know that she had to wash away her sins. He wanted this lady to know she couldn't do it by herself. She, he wanted this lady to know that only he could wash away her sin. He also wanted this lady to know that water, living water, fills us up. 
just like water fills this glass, Jesus was saying that living water, that he can fill us up. And this isn't a very good image because Jesus also said it wouldn't be like a glass filled with water where if you took a drink, you would have less water. Jesus said he was going to be like a little spring bubbling up inside us, filling us up all the time. God promises the Holy Spirit to live inside us when we've been washed of our sins. He says he'll send a helper. He'll send the Holy Spirit to be like living water, always refreshing us, bubbling us up inside and helping us to please God and to serve God. The other thing that Jesus was trying to tell this lady was this, that our bodies need water. Our bodies need water to live, but our hearts and our souls need living water. We need Jesus to live in this life and also to live in eternity. Only with Jesus can we be cleansed. Only with Jesus can we have the Holy Spirit bubbling up inside us. Only with Jesus can we really live and have joy both right now and even when we die. This woman must have been delighted to hear these things. She was sad and she was lonely and she had messed up. But here was Jesus saying, you can be cleansed. You can have real life. You can have a new life with me. She must have been thrilled. And Jesus offers us the very same thing. He says that we can have our sins washed away. He says that we can have the Holy Spirit bubbling up with life inside us. He says that we can have true life, the best life right now and even when we die. And he says he wants to meet us. And he says he wants us to ask him to take away our sin. And he will do the rest. celebrates harvest. Catherine McCartney makes a lot of jam. It is still raining. Woman receives water that quenches thirst forever. As you can hear, it's been another slow week in Ahako, but thanks to the wonder of FaceTime travel, we've got an exclusive interview with the woman at the well. Hello, woman at the well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Please tell us about the day you received living water. Well, I was fetching water from the town well when this man spoke to me. His name was Jesus. No one ever speaks to me. And he said he had water more special than the water in our town well. He said that his water would give us life forever and it would never run out. Water that could meet all your needs and never run out. What did he mean? He told me I need water to live, but that I need living water to live forever and that he could give me living water. Water that would be bubbling up inside me and giving me new life that would go on forever and ever. And do you? Do you have water bubbling up inside you? Isn't that a bit uncomfortable? No, he didn't mean that. He meant that the Holy Spirit would come and live inside me and fill me with joy and laughter and excitement and the best life forever. Thank you, women at the well. So today's news is that Jesus can wash away our sins, fill us up with his Holy Spirit, and give us the best life both now and forever. I have made 
favourite label for Jonah's Lemonade. It has today's memory verse on it. This reminds us that only Jesus can satisfy us. Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. Today's story is found in John chapter 4. Tessa only read the first part of the story covering Jesus' conversation with the woman at the well. We'd like you to read the rest of the conversation going up to verse 45. We can learn a lot about talking to others about Jesus from this woman. Here are two questions we'd like you to consider. Firstly, what effect did meeting Jesus have on this woman? And secondly, what effect did the woman's testimony have on the rest of the people in her village? A testimony is telling people about what Jesus has done for you in your life. If you're a Christian, try and write down, in the simplest terms you can, what Jesus has done for you in your life. We're really glad you could join us for Sunday School this morning, and we look forward to seeing you in real life next week at our new time of 11 o'clock. However, do keep an eye on Facebook and the church website in case any details change. See you then. Bye.